Hello, you know, today I'm going to be talking about robots, exclamation point, from Task Force Games in 1980. It's a game for two or more players. You build your own robots. There's resources involved and conflict, of course. Looking forward to trying it. It's a nice cover art here, actually. A lot of action going on. Gives you a good sense of it. Pretty vibrant, vibrant colors. Robots are always fun, so we'll see how this works out. A little bit of theme on the back. The Sixth World War. The Third World War destroyed the armies. The Fourth World War destroyed the cities. And the Fifth World War destroyed all life on Earth. The space colony survived, however. And 200 years later, man returned to Earth. But not to stay. Only to plunder the riches of his former world. Robots were used to salvage the ancient technological sites. One day, the robots of two salvage corporations met at a particular available site and fired on each other with their mining lasers. The Sixth World War had begun. Robots is a science fiction game of fast action and sudden destruction. Players construct their own robots by combining weapons, gun, missile, or laser with chassis modules, track hoover droid. Newly constructed robots move from their factory salvage ships to capture resource areas, then mine the resources to produce new robots, which then capture more salvage areas. So one or two hours, fairly easy apparently. Designers Mike Jocelyn and William Ferguson. A little more of kind of the setup and theme here. The players, each player represents one of the great corporations of space on a salvage mission to particularly rich salvage areas area on Earth. Each player will start with an equal number of production points. He may use these points to create an initial force of robots to see his own style of play. The object of the game is to establish control over the general salvage area by destroying the other player's robots and factory ships so that he may conduct more extreme salvage operations without interruption. So it looks pretty intriguing. See how simple it is. And we'll see kind of what maybe technologies are involved here. Components, 14 page rule book. Go over that in detail. Of course, this is a task force game capsule game, so it doesn't include dice, but here's the counters. There's two two colors for two different sides. You know, two players or more players, I guess. The colors are the same, just different colors. For the unique counters and the two sides, we have submerged. These are factories. And some motion you know, chassis elements are droids, hoovers, and tracks. And the indicator on these items is the movement allowance. And you'll see these for both sides, of course. Some attack elements, gun, laser, rocket. And the indicators on those are the attack strength and the range. Some special items, there's suicide robot drills and electronic warfare. And the counters are you know the two sets of 54 each so a total of 108 counters. Counters are only one-sided but I think you know their art is very fairly simple but functional. As far as the map it's a 16 by 20 inch kind of medium thickness paper that obviously, you know, folds up to fit in the capsule game. Of course, it's hexes. Different colors indicate different terrain. Lake, river, desert, rough, and mountain. And these, these different symbols, this, this, are different 
resource indicators for the different scenarios. So a given scenario would have one of these sets of resource indicators. And you see them you know spread a spread across the board. Yeah it's fairly fairly simple but it's functional. Getting into rules here. Scale each X is half mile across. Sequence of play for weather determination play phase players use optional weather rules to determine the weather conditions for the entire turn. Resource calculation allocation phase. Mutual both players calculate the number of resource points they have by multiplying the number of friendly resource hexes they hold by the number of friendly active factories. Mutual construction and deployment phase. Both players expend points for building new robots. The players player holding the greatest number of resource hexes overall chooses who will deploy first. Both players now deploy new robots. The player selected to deploy the first places one robot according to the initial deployment rules. Then the deployment does the same. They alternate. Player B's drill movement phase, optional, when playing with the optional drill movement rules. B goes first. Player A's reaction, if one of the B drills surfaced at the end of its movement, player A may fire the surfacing drill with any units within range. The attack strength of units firing is divided in half. Round fraction is down. Firing units may still move in their turn and attack in the normal combat phase. Player B's drill combat phase, all surface drill robots owned by player B may, but not required, attack to attack player A's units within range. Player A's normal movement phase, player A now moves his robots within the limitations of rules. Movement, rules of movement. Player B's normal combat phase, player B, B now uses units to attack any player A units within range. Note that drills which fired may not fire again. Player A's drill movement phase. Player A now moves any or all of his subsurface drill robots in accordance with the movement rules. Player B's reaction phase. If one of the A drills surfaced at the end of the movement, player B may find the surfacing drill within the units within range. The attack strength of the, the units firing is run half, run fraction is down. Firing units may still move in their turn and attack in the normal combat phase. Player A's drill combat phase. All surface drilled robots owned by player A may attack B units within range. Player B's normal movement phase. Player B now moves through his robots within the limitations of the rules of movement. Player A's normal combat phase. Player A now uses units to attack any B units within range within the rules of combat. Drews which fired may not fire again. Factories and robot constructions. Robots consist of two or more counters, chassis. Transport counter, one more of weapons counters, and possibly another counter for electronic warfare, subsurface drill, or suicide robot counter. Resource protection units, specified number of protection points are required to produce any of the modules in the game. Resource points are determined by the number of resource hexes held, multiplied by the number of active factories. Resource hexes, these are the three sets of resource hexes on the map. Each designated by a different symbol before a given scenario begins. It has role to determine which of the three sets is used for the current scenario, and the other two are ignored. Whenever a player moves one of his robots through a resource hex, that resource hex becomes friendly to him. If robots from both players are in the resource hex simultaneously, neither play owns that hex until one of them has their the only robots in that hex. Hoover robots must move through a resource hex in ground mode or on their movement in resource hex to claim as friendly. Robot that does not have any functioning weapons modules cannot capture make friendly resource hex. Resource hex will be friendly to one player during any given production phase. Resource hex determination tart. These are the die rolls and these are the hexes. For instance, here. Each player must keep a record of his unexpected spent production points. 
During his turn, he will add any new production received to his stockpiles and deduct any production spent for new robots. Factories cannot be placed in resource hex. Factories may only be placed in a desert hex. Factories attack and defend in regular units as regular units. His qualifications, they may never move except to evacuate. They may attack with all of their several modules and they may only be destroyed by explosion result in combat results table. All factories, including the decoy, seem to have the following weapons fit modules, one laser, two rocket, three gun, one EW. These modules are permanently attached to the factory and may not be removed to be placed in robots. These weapons are not re represented by counters. They're recorded on scratch paper. Weapons modules on a factory may be damaged by a fire directed at the factory. It's part of the regular combat. Factory can repair its own damaged weapons and replace its own damaged destroyed weapons. Weapons in excess of those initially stored may not be added to a factory. Factory itself can't, can be destroyed by explosion, result, or nuclear district module. Propulsion helps, hits may prevent a factory from evacuating. Because of the many defensive electronic systems installed on factory ships, long range rocket fire is less effective. In the case of rocket fire at a factory, from a range of six hexes or more, and when rocket fire in a factory is indirect, the attack strength of the firing rocket modules is halved. Construction of robots during the mutual construction and deployment phase. Both players have the opportunity to produce robots. To construct a robot, a player would simply buy whatever modules he desired to include, deducting the cost of these modules from his available resource points. If he does not have sufficient production points to purchase their module, he may not purchase it. The counters representing these modules are then placed in a stack and during the appropriate portion of the turn deployed. These are the modules and production cost. Nuke, 5, EW, 3, Laser, 4, Rocket, 4, Gun, 1, Drill, 3, Hoover, 3, Droid, 2, Drax, 1. Robot construction is limited by the counters provided in the game. Factory ship evacuation a player may, during his move phase, choose to evacuate one or more of his factories to prevent its destruction. To accomplish this, simply announce an evacuation and remove the counter from the map sheet. Note the factory conditions for certain considerations doing this. If 12 or more propulsion hits have been scored on a given factory during the game, the factory may not be evacuated. Decoy factories. Each player deploys three factory ships during each scenario. One of these is a not a working factory with a decoy. Before a play begins, each player secretly designates which was his factory is a decoy. That must be done in writing so it can be confirmed at the end of the game. Decoy factories have all weapons, normal factories do and can store and use production points. The only difference is that decoy factories do not count for production purposes. This game's single hex consists of a stack of up to seven counters, a single robot or factory is often for a unit. Placement of the counter is extremely important in robots since it determines the condition of the robot. Robot stacking is unlimited, any number of friendly and enemy robots may be in the same hex during all phases. There may never be more than one factory counter hex. Friendly factories may not be placed initially within seven hexes of each other. Stacking is no effect in combat. The normal condition of a robot is unit as follows. Chest module face up. Weapons modules face up. Suicide module face up. Wep weapons module face up with a chassis counter. Suicide module face up, bottom of the stack. Drill module, top of the stack. Player may never examine his opponent stack to determine what sort of robot is there. How are the weapons modules must be exposed and fired. Face down counters are used to indicate damage modules. Given robot, may only have one of each type of counter. Just CW suicide drill, except for except for weapons. Trike and droid joint droid chassis may have three sort of weapons. Hoover chassis may have two. Hoover and droid chassis may have drills. Modules may only be transferred between robots and factory. Movement units are moved individually or in stacks to the text grid. Some cost more movement points than others and some are more costly to particular types of robots. Units move individually through the hex grid, paying cost movement points 
Their movement allowance, cost of each type, effects as shown, train effects chart, shown here. Movement may be restricted by zones of control, chassis transporters, trucks. Caterpillar star tracks prohibited from entering the mountain or lake hexes. Hoover units, Hoover robots are capable of flight or close surface movement. With surface mode, they may move to excess maximum. They do not receive the combat bonus, plus one of the die roll when rolling an attack, nor may they be attacked on the defender in air line the combat results table. When the air Hoover robots move up to 17 hexes, any movement by a Hoover robot in excess of two hexes per turn is considered to be in the air. Droid, humanoid shell, resembles a human being from the waist down with droid-like appendages, but is considerably larger, 40 feet, and weighs several tons. Optional transport, the drill. Drill modules may be added to attract robots to allow them to move below the surface of the earth. Only track chassis may have drill modules. However, a robot equipped with a drill module does not have to have any other transport module. When moving subsurface, special sections of the sequence of play must be, may be used. We talked about that. Drill modules have a movement allowance of five. All terrain types cost one point per hex for subsurface movement. When a drill robot is moving below the surface, the counter marks submerged is placed on the robot. Drill robots may not be attacked when all subsurface except by another drill robot that is in subsurface at the same hex. Drill robots, which are subsurface, do not have zones of combat on the surface. They have subsurface zones of combat in the hex. They occupy only submerged robots entering the zone of control, must stop and move no further during the combat and movement phase. Nuclear weapons can destroy a submerged drill rob robot. Well, a drill robot may tunnel under a lake or mountain hex. It may not surface in lake or mountain hexes. Lake hex, it would be disturbed by flooding. If it surfaced in a mountain hex, it would cause a massive disturbance. Let's try the real ro robot. Only robots with drill modules may move subsurface. The tunnels created collapse behind the drill robot. It may not be used by the robots. So train effects. Weather. Players may at their Option, use the following weather rules to simulate this. Play rolls. Today's turn. And then refers to the weather table below to determine that turn's weather. The resulting weather conditions for the entire turn are if test was rolled on the immediately previous turn, add one to the die roll. If mud was rolled on the immediately previous turn, subtract one to the die roll. Note whether on the earth was a serious disruptive and massive use of nuclear weapons. Normal no effect, mud, the cost of movement points to enter all hexes is doubled for all robots except Hoover. Hoover robots in ground mode actually fly at deep of the earth, skimming just over the mud. Dust movement points, units aren't changed. Gun laser may only attack adjacent hexes, rocket modules may attack up to half range and half normal attack strength. Full strength on adjacent. Units equipped to EW are unaffected. There's not dust or like hexes. Use adjacent to like and fire at other units adjacent to the same like. Use normal rules. Fly in sight. It's entirely of like. Zones of control. All robots and factories have zones of control. Each unit's zone of control extends into the six, six hexes surrounding the unit. Fixes the zone of control. Any robot which begins the movement phase and enemy zone of control may have moved during the movement phase, except to enter the hex occupied by the enemy unit, which is exerting the zone of control. Units which enter an enemy zone of control must immediately cease movement for the remainder of that movement phase. Robots which have no working weapons modules do not have zones of control. Submerged drilled robots do not have surface zones of control. Combat procedure. Units take individually, exception electronic warfare. Units also defend individually. Combat factors of individual, individual modules are unitary, exception rockets. It may not be divided to attack one on one target. A given robot may fire each of its weapons module at a different target. Each target is resolved, separate attack, and all, except command attacks. Attacks by a given robot must be resolved before moving to the next unit. For laser and gun modules to fire, 
They must have a clear line of sight to the target. Rocket modules do not have to have a clear line of sight. They may fire indirect over intervening terrain. Line of sight, for units in non-mountain hexes, mountains walk line of sight. Units on non-mountain hexes may fire into mountain hexes, but not through them. Units which are in mountain hexes may fire over other mountain hexes and units on mountain hexes and hexes and may fire units on non-mountain hexes. However, units which are in mountain hexes may have fire over mountain hex at a unit which is not on a mountain hex. Hoover units in air mode are considered to be at the same elevation as units on mountain hexes. Flying intersects a mountain hex along its edge. Line of sight is blocked and the unit may not fire. Unless they're in mountain hexes. Weapons, gun, direct fire weapon, use general combat rules, rocket, rockets may split their attack vectors, they may fire two targets in the same turn by firing one attack strength point for each, at each, at each. Rockets do not have to have a clear line of sight. Rockets have special restrictions when firing factories. Laser, direct fire weapon, use general combat rules. Combat results table, back cover. Optional weapons, nuclear destruct module. There may be there may only be two on the map sheet and in any one time. One must be destroyed before the owning player may construct another one. The nuclear destruct module is simply a huge nuclear bomb which is carried to target with transport and detonated. The terms of the nuclear destruct module, NDM, Susan module and Susan robot we use interchangeably. Is detonated by the owning player at the end of any combat phase. So, nuclear destruct module is a suicide robot. The NDM does not use the normal combat table, so it uses the following table to attack all units within radius described, including friendly units inadvertently left in the blast radius. Hex distance from detonation 0 to 1, all units eliminated, factory destroyed, and die roll of 1 to 4. Submarine units destroyed. Two to three. All units attacked on three column on the combat results table. Factory destroyed. I roll of one to two. Submerged units destroyed. Roll of one to two. Four to seven. All units attacked on one column combat results table. Factory destroyed. On a roll of one. Submerged units not affected. One hit on an NDM module does no damage to it. A second hit destroys the module, but it does not detonate. Electronic Warfare. Electronic Warfare can do three things. It allows robots to cooperate in attacking. It adds one to the die roll when attacking, or it can be used to take over an opposing robot. Cooperation Attacks. Cooperation Attacking. Normally all, all robots attack independently from each other. However, when a robot is equipped with an electronics module, it may combine its attack vectors with any other robot. With one any other robot with one other robot. The second robot must be in the same hex for Jason or Jason. To the first robot, shifting the attack die roll, any attack involving a robot equipped to the eat electronics module is resolved by adding one to the die roll. Exception, submerged drills, we never use EW. Any other robot that's incorporating the attack is included in the single total, and one is added to the die roll. If the weapons of a given robot are being fired at two or more different targets, the electronics module can only be used to improve one of the attacks. EW capture optional. Electron EW weapons are not used to destroy enemy robots, but do put opposing robots under the control of the player. Procedure total number of EW modules attacking, costing the exact number of hex away from what the target is. Number of attackers, number of distance. Explanation of results. Numbers shown or higher must be rolled to capture the enemy robot. Facts of capture, the robot immediately becomes one of the attacking player's robots. It may move and attack the atoning owning player's next turn. Note factories cannot be captured by EW. Hoover units, because of their unique properties, robots build on Hoover chassis have special considerations to combat. Whenever an attack is made by Hoover robot in airborne mode, airborne mode, was added to the die roll. Whenever Hoover Hoover robot is in the air, it's attacked on a special air line on the combat results table. Die roll additions. One may be added to the die roll for Hoover robots and for EW modules. 
These effects are cumulative. Salvage and repair. Damage modules may be repaired in wrecked robots. We have salvage during the course of the game to the, by the final rules. Damage module may be repaired for half the original cost of module. This can only be done in a friendly factory hex and only during the production phase. Note this will require players to keep track of half points. Players can scrap any damage module during the production phase in order to release more counters for new construction. This is expensive, but it may save. Modules may be trans transferred between one robot and another at the cost of one production point per module. They can only be this can only be done in front of the factory and only done during the production phase. If the transport chassis of a given robot is destroyed, the other modules of the robot remain in the hex. They may fire but cannot move. They may be recovered by the following procedure. The only player must construct a robot consisting of only transport chassis. The robot is known as a recovery robot. This may be done by removing the modules from an existing robot or building a new empty one. The player may also use a chassis which has hit all of its original weapons destroyed. In any event, the recovery robot must begin the recovery mission in front of the factory. The empty chassis must then be moved up to the hex occupied by the abandoned modules. You may load one such module each turn, didn't put a phase. After loading it, after loading, the recovery robot may move to another hex, another sub stack of modules, or return to the, the factory. When being transported, recovered modules may not be used. Weapons can, cannot fire, EW cannot function, but may be damaged by a fire directed at the recovery robot. Upon return to the factory, the modules may be installed on any available chassis, including the recovery robot, for the cost of transferring modules. Damaged recovery robots may still function, though at lower movement rates. Playing the game. Each playing of the game is referred to the scenario for playing the game. Before the game begins, the factory ships and 40 initial points for robot construction are just deployed. Players should have a sheet of paper and known and use production points. Possession of hexes, identify identity of a decoy factory, setup, factory is deployed, player determined, player A, factory is redeployed, robot is constructed and deployed, resource hexes rolled for. Deployment of factories, each player secretly writes on a sheet of paper, they shall set up with hexes through its factories. Factories may all be set up and in desert train hexes. Factories may never be landed in resource hexes. Decoy factory must be designated specifically. Three factories are then deployed. They are mobile except for evacuation. Player order determination. Each player will determine their order. Player A's factory redeployment. Player A may redeploy any factory that is within five, he five hexes and direct line of sight of the same hex as a factory you'd blame the other player. The factory may move it five hexes five hexes in any direction or a combination of directions to new hex. This hex must be selected strictly along the lines of following priorities. It's not a direct line of sight, enemy factory is more than five hexes from enemy factory, is more than seven hexes from all friendly factories. So new landing hex, if at all possible, fall Full, fulfill condition one. If more than one hex fulfills condition one, one of these must be selected which fulfills condition two. If more than one hex fulfills condition one and two, one of these must be selected which fulfills condition three. Any of the three conditions which cannot be fulfilled is ignored. Note player B attacks first. Note the new factory deployment hex must be a desert hex and must not be a resource hex. This redeployment option will prevent a player losing a factory before he has a chance to fire. Deployment of initial robot force after deploying the factories, both players construct their initial robot force, is done simultaneously in secret in a manner similar to the deployment factories process. Both players have an initial pool of 40 resource points that may be allocated to build any type of combination allowed. Initial robots may be placed in any of the factories, including the decoy, and may then move five movement points. This is not considered part of the movement phase. This special movement is known as the initial deployment. Initial deployment may not enter 
enemy zones of control, or be underground movement. At the start of the game, initial deployment is performed in alternate manner. First player A deploys one robot, and then player B, and it continues. During the game, all inco incoming robots are deployed at, and are deployed as in above, regardless of the factory they were built in. Victory conditions. The game continues until one player has no factory ships remain in the map sheet. The player with one or more factory ships remaining wins the scenario. In the event that both players lose their last factory ships during the same phase, game is a tie. Decoy factories are not considered to be factories for the purpose of victory conditions. If neither player has achieved victory in 20 turns, the game is draw. Note. Everyone has to evacuate before the back background radiation levels cause too much radiation poisoning, hence ending by turn 20. Alternative victory conditions. Player may, if they prefer, play for a specified number of turns. After each victory is turned by a point system, players first catch in their robots, can bring them resource points. After deducting 40, the initial amount, initial result, the player Adds points to the following. Each enemy factory ship evacuated 20. Each enemy factory ship destroyed 50. Each unused production point starting factory 1. And includes factories which were evacuated. Decoys and icons destroyed factories or factories evacuated for the purpose of these conditions. Campaign game. The objective of the campaign is for each player to obtain the greatest stockpiles of recovered material from Earth. Casualties have no effect. Each player of the group obtained to undertake the campaign to assume the identity of one of the two great corporations of space. Shown. Two players participate in each scenario. The scheduled scenario should allow each player to compete against each other player one time. Or perhaps twice. All robots built during any given scenario are still on the board at the end of it are and still on the board at the end of it are seem to have been removed with departing, departing factory ships or to have been deactivated and abandoned. No victory points were for robots. Each player scores a victory points as follows. Each undestroyed factory in the map sheet in the scenario 100 points. Each unused production point in a factory that was evacuated at a quarter point. Each non decoy factory ship lost. During a scenario, minus 25 points. Maximum 25 points per scenario may be scored for production points on evacuated factories. Decoy factories do not count as factories for these victory conditions. Variants, alternate scenarios, and optional rules. Terrain options. All lakes have become swamps. Swamps can be crossed by tracks and hoovers, but not droids. Some rivers are swollen and cannot be crossed by tracked robots. Players might designate these rivers can be crossed by tracked units. And it costs a plus two, and or the rivers cannot be crossed by droids because the water is too swift. Any hexide separating mountain hex from desert terrain is considered to be a cliff hexide and cannot be crossed by droid units. Players might designate some rivers to be a fall hex wide. This could be done by saying that all hexes in a river are like hexes. And track units may cross lake units by driving across the bottom. Cost is three movement points for hex. Track robots cannot end their movement. Phase in a lake hex. Players might declare some lake hex is too de deep for droid robots to, to wait. Again, these are different options. Scenario variations. One player starts the game, assume that he is one scenario. Let's assume he's one scenario. He brings two factories, iron points. All resources are going to be friendly to him. The other player drops three factories, 50 points of production. Of these victory conditions should subtract the actual points. 50 to 100. Both players have a different set of production hexes. Each player rolls a die to determine which hex which set it is. Resource hexes are still friendly or unfriendly, but a player can only draw production from resource hexes. Weapons options. Rapid fire weapons. These weapons cost twice as much as regular models, but can fire twice per turn. Direct fire rockets. These rockets cost three production points instead of four, but cannot use indirect fire. Indirect fire guns. This costs two production points instead of one, but can fire indirect. And then here's the combat results table. So number of attack strength points, firing, where the target is. 
So W's, one open hit, two, you know, propulsion hits, propulsion weapon, explosion. So that's the rules. We'll get up into the setup and play. So doing setup here, the setup is shown here in the rules. The order is factory is deployed, player order determined, player area factory is redeployed, robots constructed and deployed, resource hexes rolled for. So, first of all, fact, I don't know which re, which of the three different types of resources go on to yet. So I'm going to set up the factory so they're within you know proximity of the different ones, and I'm having blue coming in this side of the board basically in the orange coming here and you see the factory set up in proximity to the different you know resources types similarly here and then deciding which secretly showing which of the ones are dummies the the three blue factory is a dummy and the two orange factory is a dummy the order I'll be going is orange and is a uh, blue and orange. Didn't need to redeploy any factories because it's already setting up according to limitations about distance from line of sight and etc. So we're good there. Robots constructed and deployed. I have 40 RP for each. I decided to go with. Blue is going to go with a bunch of standard robots, which are guns, rockets, and tracks. I got five of those. And then I have one drill gun, rocket, and track. And for instance, so the setup is track, weapons, you know, gun, rocket, drill. For an example. And then taking the cost, you know, three for drills, one for tracks, one for guns, four for rockets. Get a total of of 39 total there, so that's what they're doing. Orange, they're doing some a little more diverse systems, and they'll have, so they're going to have two drill guns and tracks, two gun gun tracks, one EW laser laser hoover, one EW laser hoover. And that's the mix of theirs. And I have them set up across the board. And you set them up in factories, and then they're allowed five movement points to move outside the factory. And so here, for instance, set up there, moved it out a bit. Again, I'm not sure which resources yet, so they're kind of going kind of in between. Similarly here, kind of spreading out by different you know, resources. Again, five movement points. They can't drill yet. Blue started the factories and moved out up to five movement points. Going across desert here. Uh, this one had to cross a river. So. so just kind of getting in between like resources, kind of sort of moving forward a little bit. Then moving for the re rolling for the resources. Two. Look at the resource chart. So that'd be the asterisks. So these are the, where the resources are. Then we're set up for play. So I'm starting out play here. First of all, I'm going to do the uh, optional weather roll. So we'll roll for the weather. Two is normal, so no weather effects. And then the sequence is shown here. Resource calculation, calculation. So the amount of resources you have is the number of factories times the number of resource hexes, and I don't currently have any of those. So player A is blue and B is orange. I'm doing drills too. They have a couple robots here and they're gonna, first of all, they're gonna submerge 
indicated with that. This one will also submerge. And they have five movement points and each hex is one. They can go under rivers and lakes. Perry's reaction. If one of the bee drills surfaced at the end of movement, play may fire, through a drill. They didn't surface, they're still submerged. Fair bees drill combat. All surface drills can combat, they're not surfaced. Player A's normal movement phase. He's gonna move his drill later, but they're gonna move onto the resources. Again, the resources are the asterisks. And the track has 10 movement points. As far as other resources, he's gonna be moving and then it's one more to cross the river, so it's so four, five, six. Fortunately, he doesn't have a lot of those resources around here. He'll be moving this one as well. Cost two to cross there. He'll start moving these over. Keep one defensive, and then one move over to get resources. He'll keep him over here. One, two, three, four. Gotta okay, keep him there. He'll start moving him over here. Movement for rough is three. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. He'll just stop there. And B's normal combat phase. Sees which ones are in a range and see who he can attack. He's submerged. The range is five. Can't quite reach there. He's submerged. This range is five. Five. And five, so. Nothing can reach there. Player A's drill movement. So he's going to submerge. B's reaction phase. So if any of the drills come up, B can attack, but he didn't do that. A's drill combat phase. They haven't surfaced, so they didn't do that. B's normal movement. He wants to defend this factory. He's on a track. He'll go over there to defend that factory. Several resources around here. He has a Hoover. Go over to this resource. Another Hoover. He'll go over to this resource. Track. You'll go over to this resource. Again, moving across desert is one. So that's all his movement. He's normal combat. See what's in range. He's got a rocket for 10. But nothing's in range there. Go to the next turn then. To the next turn here. First of all, we check the weather. Five, just normal. Then we do the resource calculation allocation. To have a resource, you need to have it be friendly to you. You need to either go, go through it on ground or land on it. And Orange has hoovers, they didn't, but they ended their turn there, so I can have them resource here, resource here, and then on ground it's over here. So I indicate the hexes that are friendly here for orange. They have three. So the number of resources is three times the number of active factories, which is two. So they have six resources. Blue has 
drawn there and there. So we've got two resources indicate right down the hexes, two factories times two resources is four. Construction and deployment. Orange will go with the track. Blue will go with the Hoover. Blue has one more. They'll put a, a gun in that. Start right here. So that's four points for them. Orange, they'll go with a, a track, which is one. They'll go with a gun and a laser. A gun is one. A laser is four, so their total is six. So they get that unit. Robot ready to go. They're deployed. First place is one in accordance with initial deployment rules and player B's drill movement. He will unsubmerge. This trouble will unsubmerge as well. Perry's reaction, if one of B drills submerged in the surface, if one of B drills surfaced, primary fire on the surfacing drill with any units in range. Attack with the firing, units to right in half, and so he's in range of both of these. He'll go with a rocket. Combat here then. So you take the attack factor and route it down. Rocket is two and the gun is one. So um, one, one half rounded down is zero and two um, half of that is one. He'll be going at this drill. For the combat results table, the targets in desert. Three. Weapon, damage to weapon, takes two hits to destroy a weapon, so it's damaged, flip it over, that's the only one in range for a player A reaction, B drill combat, I'll throw drills, may attack player A's units in range, he's damaged so he can't fire. He though has a gun, he'll be attacking that unit, so it's within the range of five. They're both on desert, and go to the combat table. Strength of one, four, weapon, so he damages one of his weapons. Flip it over to show damage. He still has a gun though. Player is normal movement, so blue will go. He's going to move down here to get that resource. He'll stay around here for defensive purposes. He'll move up. Still submerged. Actually, he's going to unsubmerge. That's friendly, so he can keep moving now. So three points, so six, seven, eight, ten. Tracks can't go over mountain, so he'll stay back here for defensive purposes. Player B's normal combat phase. Can't fire drills again. He's out of range. Out of range. It's everything for orange is out of range. A's drill movement phase. So it's robots from Task Force Games from 1980. It's an enjoyable game. The components are fairly simple. Map is okay. So I mean the com components aren't great, but they're functional. It's a it's an interesting kind of build your robot and combat game. It's also got 
resources involved. It's a lot to like about it. There's a lot of flexibility as far as you can do, you know, electronic warfare, you can do tunneling. Um, you can choose different motion platforms, different a little bit of variety in weapons, not a huge variety, but some. So there's a whole lot of variations of different tactics you could use. So it's, it has a lot in the kind of a small package. It's well done. It's fairly unique, I think. It's got a good, good backstory to it. It's clearly, you know, science fiction. Um, so I definitely recommend it and give it a 7 out of 10. Thanks a lot.